But beyond the tax hikes and spending cuts that would kick in if we fall off the cliff, there's also fear of another U.S. debt downgrade by the major, major rating agencies. Well, so will that happen? And will it derail any hopes of a real economic recovery? In today's closing bell exchange, we have Lee Munson from Portfolio Asset Management. We have Jared Bernstein, CNBC contributor and former chief economist under Vice President Joe Biden. We're going to hopefully get Andrew in a second. But we also have Rick Santelli, who joins us as always at this time. Gentlemen, fantastic to have you with us. Lee, on this news, it seems as if the market is, uh, is getting its hopes up. Personally, I feel I will believe it when I see it. Would you agree? I, yeah, you should you should wait until uh, this is actually uh, the, the ink is dried. Here's one thing that's really changed in sentiment over the last week, Mandy, is that you know last week everybody was talking about having this deal baked into the price. Now all of a sudden, as if some miracles happened, traders are actually talking about buying more puts, putting on more hedges. I can tell investors out there that it doesn't matter if December 31st we have a deal or if it goes a few weeks in January. All we need to know Sunday night, Monday morning, is that they're working on a deal and they're still at the table. Outside of that, everything's just noise. Jared, how do you know Washington very, very well? We've been trying to read the tea leaves today. Harry Reid was out with a Twitter, a tweet early on, and then there was scheduling a news conference. That got canceled. It got moved. Now suddenly we're hearing that the House is reconvening. What do you make of all the tea leaves we're getting right now? Uh, I just think it's extremely chaotic. It reminds me of uh, uh, the arguments between my two young daughters as to who's going to empty the dishwasher, uh, except there's uh, 500 billion in uh, negative fiscal impulse uh, in play here. I thought Lee put it very well. Uh, the issue at this point, it, it seems to me, I mean, it ain't over till we're over, but it seems to me the issue is, is this going to be a, cha a chaotic uh, cliff dive or more of a bungee jump wherein there does seem to be the makings of a deal? As I've described uh, on our show before, there are technical matters that actually make it easier for Republicans to support a kind of a compromise deal like the president's last offer after we go over. So wait a minute, so you don't necessarily see any of the developments today as progress per se? No, I don't. In fact, if you actually listen to the words these folks saying, uh, they're saying to each other, it's kind of like, yeah, we're here, but we're, we're not re really willing to talk to each other about anything substantive. And it's also very difficult for me to imagine any new kind of offer or plan coming into the mix that could be absorbed in a matter of days. So basically, all the offers are on the table, and I don't see a clear political path to any one of them prior to going over the cliff. You know, Rick Santelli, I love this country. I chose to move to this country, but I'm getting very frustrated with the leaders of this country. Welcome to America. Yeah. yeah. It well feels put, like they're, really, they're teaching us the fiscal crowd. irresponsibility. They want us to pay our mortgage on time. They want us to pay our taxes on time when they seem to be not able to do anything on time themselves. Well, well, there's exactly. a lot, there's I mean, a softball the, for you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the entire argument that, you know, uh, the wealthy, uh, they don't mind, they vote for higher taxes, they don't spend the money anyway. Just tell that to all the cottage industries, people that help with housework, watch the kids, vacations, airlines. I don't buy into it. I think that's one of the reasons stocks act the way they do. But I'll tell you, I have a different slant on this. Okay. I'm yeah. not, you know, a big Scott Brown follower. I, I think he's a little different in my book. But that tweet, he's where the president made the GOP a deal and he was jumping on a plane and all of a sudden the White House denied it's true and now we see that the House of Representatives for no apparent tangible reason going to be back in session on Sunday. I personally think Scott Brown tweeted something he wasn't supposed to. I think there is movement there and I think maybe his tweet <coughs> offers us a clue even though nobody wants to acknowledge the characters in Kabuki Theater. Isn't that interesting? And Andrew, it all comes as the, uh, the volatility index the fear indicator in the market has been rising. We were back in uh, yellow flag territory, as I call it, above 20, first time since July. <laughs> now, uh, which would mean that the market was actually getting some sweaty palms here, don't you think? Yeah, it's getting pretty chaotic. The you know, interesting thing to me is you look at the volume. The volume is extremely low. If you look at a stock like Apple, usually it trades 20 million shares in a day. Today, only half the volume. It's only traded 10 million shares. They came out and said the house is going to meet on Sunday. The market rallied to the upside. This reminds me of a different scenario. I'm not going to use the dishwasher one. It's going to remind me of Greece. Greece is getting bailed out. Greece isn't getting bailed out. Greece is getting bailed out and going on back and forth. So will there be a deal by December 31st? I don't think so. But if a deal gets 
panned out by mid-January, then we can look forward to start focusing on, on earnings and hopefully get this fiscal cliff over with so we can really see what's going on important in the world, and that's earnings. So Lee, let me just comment. Can I comment on... Um, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I, I want to comment on Rick Santelli's optimistic view that maybe there really is a deal in the Olympics. And he's, he has a point. You know, it's not over till you know, till it's over, and these guys do sometimes come up with last-minute deals. But I want to be very clear. In order for that to happen, John Boehner basically has to agree that he's going to get a deal out of the House with majority Democrat votes. And I don't see why he does that before January 3rd. Well, you're assuming the president has all the leverage. And I think the president would have a horrible legacy starting out with such turmoil. So I disagree. Guys, I think there's movement on the White guys, House guys, side so again, on entitlement. But, but, Rick, you do have to... Except guys, we, the fact that John we, Boehner gets Democratic go, goes goes to for the deal with Democratic votes and he's hard about to see as that. acrimonious and able to get a deal done as Sir Harry Reid. Well, hey, uh, hey, you Jared, know, guys, you Jared, know, the bottom line is, though, look Jared. at the VIX. We only added 20. We're barely into, like, anything. The market right. is clearly saying it doesn't care. I mean, hey, listen, I run my client's money looking at the VIX with, with my left eye, but 20, give me a break. you got to thrill me above 30, above 35 I before any of this Lee, is anything other than very rally? interesting. If we get a deal, say Sunday night we get a deal, right? Do the markets rally, or does it really depend on what the deal consists of? Lee? Oh, I think, I think secretly they're going to sell off on the news. Don't tell the general public that. But I think as soon as we get a deal, everybody's going to sell off on the news because they bought on the rumor. That's your opportunity to get in there and buy. That reminds me of the story when John Kennedy announced his brother for attorney general. The joke was he walked out at 2 o'clock in the morning and just yelled, whispered, it's Bobby, and then walked back inside. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jared, I want to pursue this line of reasoning with you and, and Rick Santelli some more. What would the president be able to offer that would bring more Republicans into the fold on a House vote here? Well, do you I, don't think? I, I, I don't think that the president is go going to offer anything particularly well, new between now and then. he's got to give something, don't you think? Yes, and I think that what he'll offer is a $250,000 threshold on the taxes, extended unemployment insurance, kick the, uh, kick the uh, sequester down the road, and patch the AMT and what we call the doc fix, you know, the Medicare piece of this. Is and, that going to be enough? And, is that gonna... Well, Rick, does that well, bring the, the Republicans into the no. fold then for John Boehner? Once again, I'm not going to argue about the small but important piece. I think in order to make this happen in the House, he needs to go to the other side of the discussion and bring some real potential reform and entitlement reform to the table. Obviously, they can't get it done in 72 hours, Correct. but there needs to be at least a one and a half to two and a half to one okay. spending cuts versus taxes, Rick and is that's talking, where the movement has to be. So Rick, Rick is talking about what, around here what we call a grand bargain, which is tax reform and entitlement reform. Absolutely no way that happens before the end of the year. But I'm very much in sync with some of the other folks who are saying whether we go over and it's more of kind of a bungee jump where a deal is in the making at the time that we go over the cliff. That's actually a very big difference between that and a real chaotic cliff dive. So that's what I'd be looking for at this point. Mm -hmm. So a framework of some kind, not a grand bargain. Correct. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys.